Alright, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and today today is essentially just we're we're chilling, we're relaxing, we're trying to see if we can just play patient into next week. We've got data coming out, the FOMC, a cycle low is due. So today it's just gonna be a, a bit of a bit of everything really, a bit of crypto news, a bit of macro, a bit of what I'm expecting to see next week, a bit of liquidity talk, um, bearish versus bullish narratives and uh, that's pretty much it so let's get into it i want to start by pointing out that it's amazing how productive doing nothing can be in the markets this is a skill that's very very underrated as bob lucas says right here it's one that also takes a lot of years to finally perfect and appreciate it's perfectly fine to sit and do nothing okay and often you can just end up damaging your account by over trading in the markets during a time of essentially worthless price action as i've been pointing out for a while now it looks like this blue count is going to have to be accepted we can even get rid of this green count i think for now we don't need that i did say that likely we'd form a low and then hopefully we could undercut that low into the cycle low and that seems to be what's happened we've had our first swing so now looking to undercut this low into that cycle low next week due around the 12th obviously give it a couple of days either side but still looking to see a swing low form here out of that cycle low and then it's a case of does that cycle roll over and fail in which case we flip short or does this cycle do what i think it's going to do which is proceed higher and make a run on all-time highs the only other chart i'm really looking at at the moment is bitcoin it's interesting bitcoin currently sits at 17,200, so we're only 400 dollars away from confirming this spring that i've been showing on this channel over and over again as you can see here keeping an eye on that to see if it can do that before next week but i would think if we can get these lower cpi print and the 50 basis point hike as i've been saying over and over again then that should indeed catalyze a rally up things continue to fundamentally improve for bitcoin as you can see here a mexican senator is saying that mexico will be bitcoin land so they are looking to adopt this the story is not quite the same in the eu however they are proposing new laws requiring bitcoin and crypto services to report customer transactions so the eu is cracking down they're tightening the screws they're trying to get this thing inside of their control but of course it's not going to work embracing it like el salvador has or mexico has is the only real way to succeed we still live in a world absolutely filled with bearish narrative the equity put to call ratio has spiked again yesterday to the highest since early 1997 a similar move to mid november so again we've got record amounts of accounts short record amounts of people that do not believe the rally can continue from here they believe we've seen a bear market rally and that we have to resolve lower if this is indeed the case if we indeed do roll over and that was a bear market rally this will be the first time in history where the crowd has been right and that's why i find it so difficult to take that side of the trade that and of course all of the data that i've been showing over the past weeks and months nothing i can really find in terms of data points to supporting the narrative that that was a bear market rally and we have to roll over i think for me the only thing that could change my mind is a hot cpi print and more aggressive rate hikes but if we don't get that i really don't see any bearish narrative left at all in the mainstream media they are leading retail traders in the wrong direction we're seeing headlines like this blackrock says to get ready for a recession unlike any other and what worked in the past won't work now so there's no shortage of these sort of media narratives oh but the fed bro but this bro but that but inflation i understand okay we've seen things like this as well the uk housing bubble is popping as uk house prices fall the fastest in 14 years fall at the fastest rate in 14 years according to halifax and i've been saying this all along if we do get this rally which is of course to be confirmed wednesday or thursday this will be the most shorted the most hated rally the angriest rally the most doubted and the least understood and most painful rally the world has ever seen and that is because it doesn't make sense okay it doesn't make sense that we're just going to tear off to new all-time highs now there are loads of reasons to be bearish as i've said you know you've got the fed you've got the tightening you've got QE, all of these things right there's threats of war there's threats of all sorts but just because the media is printing all of these just because everybody thinks we're going down does not mean we can't go up okay the charts are not telling us we're going down they're telling me at least that we're going up at the same time if you're wondering where this liquidity is going to come from let the bailouts begin Jerome Powell is going to need to turn that printer back on. Biden unveils 36 billion for one of America's largest, most troubled pension funds. Does this sound familiar? Well, if it does, it's likely because we saw this in the Bank of England. They had to print $65 billion in the middle of a rate hiking cycle to bail out the pension funds that almost got margin called after the bonds and their associated yields got out of control. 
the printer is coming okay the printer is coming make no mistake about it i've shown this chart over and over again and i said that eventually you know we're going to see a record amount of qe 10 or 20 trillion i've had it written here for ages speaking of liquidity look the fed's quantitative tightening efforts are being offset by increases in liquidity elsewhere and you can see that here okay the orange line is the overall liquidity the black candles are the s p 500. this orange line overall liquidity is calculated as the fed balance sheet minus the treasury general account balance minus reverse repos okay this is a morgan stanley metric and what it shows is that this is increasing now it has increased before during these bear market rallies and it has subsequently rolled over doesn't mean we couldn't do that again but it's something worth keeping an eye on because liquidity has been in a steady uptrend since we formed the lows furthermore in terms of liquidity Tom bravo just raised 32.4 billion dollars for a new fund that will target mid-cap tech names and they're not the only ones doing this okay money is being raised at these levels is this the canary in the coal mine is the bottom in for medium cap tech something else worth keeping an eye on is that the S&P 500 gains an average of 14% within the 12 months following the Fed's last rate hike we could well be expecting or at least I have been expecting to see a 50 basis point hike then one more 50 or 25 and a pause this is the sort of language I'll be looking for at FOMC next week are they going to start to lay the foundation for a pause in rate hikes soon because normally when this happens markets do very very well in the short to medium term the S&P 500 has never experienced a 25% drop with unemployment rate sub 4% a significant amount of bad news has already been priced it's already baked in to the markets it's very possible the market is more out of step with the economy than ever and this may prove to be the first time the S&P does indeed bottom ahead of a recession if it's that case and this goes back to what I was saying there are loads of reasons to be bearish and I agree with those reasons to be bearish I understand but the charts have been telling us that we are going up the FTSE 100 is just below its all-time highs the nifty 50 is already at new highs the S&P always lags and confirms but make no mistake all it will take is for some good news next week in terms of the inflation and the rate data and we're going to see this confirm remember markets can remain irrational for longer than we can remain solvent it's likely that this is the most out of step the economy has ever been with the market it doesn't make sense but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen so i'd like to finish up how i started here okay it's amazing how productive doing nothing in the markets can be this is something i have learned over many years of practice I could try to jump in and out of trades at the moment but really what is the point we need to see the cycle low form as i've been saying we need to see what happens out of that cycle low i can add a position here i continue to push my longs out of here i continue to hold all trades as i said but really what's the point in trying to get in and out of positions at the moment we need to see what happens with the cycle low we need to see the inflation data in the fed and from there we can continue so for the rest of this week and into wednesday and thursday i'm going to continue to relax okay i'm still holding all longs I'm still pushing all trades i'm still waiting for lower cpi and rate hikes to be confirmed i'm still waiting for the cycle low to form in the s p which is due between tuesday and thursday next week and then it's either game on for the melt up or we see a failed cycle in the s p i close my longs and i flip short so it's really that simple it's really quite binary for me that's how i plan to handle the markets there's not much to do in the meantime it's just a case of waiting for those cycle lows to form and seeing what the market can give if you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're not already, turn those notifications on if you want to see how I continue to deal with these markets in real time as a pro swing trader. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy your weekend. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.